Today we're going to look at low testosterone levels in men. And we're going to look at the signs, what can tell you that you have an issue with your testosterone, and what, what are the causes, what causes this condition. And again, we're going to look at diagnosis, what um, will happen when you go to a hospital for diagnosis of the same, what the doctor will do, and uh, possible treatment for this condition. Now, Testosterone is mainly produced in men in what we call the testicles. Those are the gonads in men. And um, we have structures called the seminiferous tubules that are responsible for production of uh, sperms, what we call spermatogenesis. And in between them, this is where the cells that we call Leydig cells, which usually produce testosterone, are located. Physiologically, hypothalamus, which is uh, a part of the brain, uh, it's usually produced what we call gonadotropin uh, releasing hormone and this usually trigger the master gland what we call the pituitary gland to produce what we call luteinizing hormone and this hormone is the one that usually travel all the way to the testes to um, trigger the Leydig cells which are usually in between uh, uh, where, where we say it's between the seminiferous tubules it will trigger them to produce testosterone. Also, pituitary gland will produce luteinizing hormone that will travel all the way to seminiferous tubules and this will um, activate production of the sperms. What's low testosterone levels? Now, scientists have not actually come to a conclusion between uh, the levels that's considered to be low in men because they usually argue between 250 to 300 nanograms per deciliter, anything lower than that. So we are going to take 250. Now, anything lower than that, if your blood is taken to the laboratory and measured, and then we find that you have less than 250 nanograms per deciliter, then it means you have low testosterone. But then, this is not a definitive way of doing that. You'll have to collaborate with the signs and symptoms to know or to come to a point where to come to a conclusion whether you have exactly this condition. So you'll have to show the signs that you have this, and then the tests will come to corroborate. Briefly, what are the functions of testosterone? One, which is quite common, this is um, it's usually defined the sexual development in uh, men, even in females, but in low quantities. But in men, this is what usually define the sexual characteristics. Now, in females, it usually uh, promotes the growth of hair in the armpit and also in the pubic region. Uh, that it usually gives them the sex drive and all that. In case you have less of the testosterone, you might have decreased sex drive. You don't have um, uh, pubic hair. Yeah, so in men, uh, it usually leads to development of muscles. So the mass so density, even the, the bone mass, they usually contributed to, by, even in females, by testosterone. And also the production of red blood cells is usually triggered by testosterone. So if you have less of the testosterone, you might find that you have also less red blood cells. And this is the reason why when you are under testosterone replacement therapy, you might find that you are producing more than a normal amount of red blood cells because testosterone usually trigger the production of red blood cells. Now let's go to the symptoms. Now, the first one, which is quite obvious, uh, this is usually a low sex drive, even uh, erectile disinfunction in men. Uh, in women, you will find that uh, they have low sex drive, but today we are focusing on men. And you might find that um, you're going to have uh, a loss of hair, especially the pubic hair and the hair in the armpits. Also, the shrinking of the testicles. Because now, uh, remember we say testosterone is one of those hormones that usually define sexual characteristics in men. So if you have less of that, one of the organs that will suffer will be your testes. If you have a shrinking testicle, it means that you're going to have a reduced sperm count and even the quality. Quality and quantity will, will reduce because um, now testosterone usually supports that. And also, you're going to start experiencing hot flashes. This usually comes because when um, you have less testosterone, you are prone to getting more estrogen. Now, if you have that, then you are going to start getting those hot flashes because now estrogen is high in you. And also one of the most uh, obvious one is gynecomastia. You find that you are developing boobs, uh, breasts, and uh, other female characteristics because of less testosterone, which might allow, um, because testosterone and estrogen are usually antagonistic. So if you have less of testosterone, you are prone or you're most likely going to get that. You might also find that uh, you are easily gaining weight and uh, mostly you're gaining a lot of fat. This is because of that. Now testosterone usually improve 
uh, mass or density, but estrogen usually encourage accumulation of fat in the body. So you might find that you're gaining a lot of fat in case you have less of that. And also, like we said, the muscles and the bones are usually highly encouraged by testosterone. If you have less of that, then you're going to have one, decreased muscle mass and also decreased bone density. It also promotes osteoporosis, which is the loss of calcium from your bones. Now let's go to the causes. We have two categories here. We have primary, where now the testicles themselves will be affected. And also we have the secondary, where you're going to find that uh, now the factors that usually contribute to you having that testosterone, like for example, pituitary gland, all those will be affected. Now let's start with the primary. In case you don't have testicles, maybe this is from birth, you're definitely not going to produce enough testosterone. Yes, you can produce uh, testosterone from other organs like adrenal glands, your liver, your skin. You can produce that, but that will not be enough. The major organ that usually produces testosterone will be the testes. If you don't have them, uh, it will be an issue. And also you have people who usually have only one testicle. You might find that you have a reduced amount of testosterone in the system because now both of them are supposed to produce that testosterone. And if you only have one, it means that now you're going to produce half the amount. Now we have other conditions that may lead to you not having mature Leydig cells. The cells that we say that are responsible for production of uh, testosterone. They usually lie between the seminiferous tubules. And also undescended testicles and this is where i usually tell um, parents or oh, it's it's good to keep an eye on your on your son when they're still young because sometimes those testicles might decide to just stay in the abdomen in the lower abdomen and uh, decide not to come out so in case you don't find any in their testicles in the in the scrotum you're supposed to see a doctor or try to massage them using something like a, a warm towel and this will force them out in case they don't come out you you really need to see a doctor because in case they don't descend the high temperatures in the abdomen will destroy them so by the time they are getting to the uh, puberty they are not having enough testosterone so their male characteristics will not develop as liquid because you don't have enough testosterone. There's another condition called Klinefelter syndrome where you have two X and a Y chromosome and this usually um, exaggerates the female characteristics. Yes, you are a man because you have a Y chromosome but then due to you having two X chromosomes then uh, the female characteristics will be exaggerated. So you're going to have gynecomastia, low production of testosterone you're going to have a lot of estrogen all of those so this is one of the conditions that will cause you to have low testosterone we have injuries that will lead to removal of uh, your testicles take for example you're in an accident and maybe something happened to like injure them and they had to be removed or maybe they were just destroyed completely uh, that will be a major drawback when it comes to production of uh, testosterone and uh, you might find yourself maybe taking uh, testosterone replacement therapy or maybe some other things that you're going to see later because now you're now cutting off the supply. You have inflammation in case you have a sexually transmitted infection that is causing an inflammation in your testicles uh, you are not going to produce enough of testosterone because your cells will be inflamed and they will be affected. Another cause will be something like a radiation or um, um, chemotherapy if they're targeting maybe testicular cancer maybe our cats are there they're targeting that area uh, they might end up destroying those cells and if they are destroyed it means that you're going to hamper the production of, of that testosterone and also we have tumors we've talked about uh, testicular cancers and by the way something a little bit interesting in case maybe you have some of those testicular cancers they usually lead to some of them usually lead to a production of HCG which is what is usually measured in women to check whether they are pregnant so you might find that when um, someone tests your urine for pregnancy, in case you have those testicular cancers, you might end up, uh, that test might end up being positive, so um, testicular cancer. So the tumors might destroy those uh, Leydig cells that are producing testosterone. Now, we have um, anabolic steroid use, and this is quite rampant. Uh, one of which is um, what you're going to see later, which is hormonal replacement therapy, and this one might affect 
the testosterone levels in your system. Let's go to secondary. Like for example, you have low gonadotropin releasing hormone. If you have less of that, then the stimulation will be less. So you're not going to produce enough follicostimulating hormone and even luteinizing hormones that will lead to production of testosterone and uh, sperms at the same time. So in case you have less of that, it means the domino effect will go all the way to the testicles. And this means that you're also even going to produce less of the sperms and less of the testosterone. Others will be the disorders of the pituitary gland and also the hypothalamus. We say they play a major role when it comes to regulating other hormones in the body. Others which are general, we have something like a iron overload, we have unmanaged diabetes, we have, which is, this is a major one, being overweight and uh, either being overweight or having obesity. Now, this one will encourage insulin resistance and this comes with all manners of troubles. You might even start overproducing estrogen that will suppress testosterone and this will come with the effects of having less testosterone in the system. Sleep is very important. In case you have less of that, less of sleep, you're not going to have enough time for a circadian rhythm to do its thing. So you're not going to produce enough of that. And if you've noted by the early in the morning, you usually wake up with a, with a bonus so or you, you are erect in the morning. This is when the testosterone level is the highest so it's very important for you to even keep an eye on that so it's very important for you to keep an eye on that in case you're not having an erection early in the morning it means that you might be having less testosterone and this is another sign by the way diagnosis it's not that complicated so long as you know the signs and the symptoms we combine that with the laboratory tests like for example testosterone in case you have less of what we mentioned 250 nanograms per deciliter and you have the symptoms that are suggesting that you have issues with your testosterone, it means that you might be having exactly that. So a diagnosis might be confirmed of a low testosterone in your system. Now, we have um, other hormones. And by the way, if you are taking uh, blood samples for testing uh, testosterone in your system, that sample should be taken early in the morning around from um, 8 to 10 a.m. And actually, even earlier would be better uh, from 7 to around 10. That is, uh, this, that's the time when testosterone is the highest in the body. We have other hormones like uh, follicostimulating hormone and also luteinizing hormone which can be tested and even prolactin because now this one will um, give an indication of whether your pituitary gland is functioning as required. Now treatment, we have two types. We have natural ones and we have hormonal replacement. Now let's start with the hormonal replacement which is testosterone, it's quite simple. Uh, this is where you are now getting synthetic testosterone directly into your system and we have several of them. We call this testosterone replacement therapy and uh, we have several things. We can have an injection, the intramuscular, so an injection containing testosterone injected into your muscles. Uh, you might have um, buco pellets whereby you just take um, like a it's a pellet and you put it in your mouth and you let that dissolve into the mouth. Testosterone will diffuse all the way into your blood and it will increase the amount of testosterone that you have. And uh, we have patches, some a patch that will come and uh, be sticked on, on, your, on your skin and then uh, testosterone will just drip slowly into your system to replace the one that is missing in your system. Now, we have side effects of this condition. Okay, we have several other methods of doing the same. So long as you're delivering the testosterone in your system, uh, then this is called testosterone replacement therapy. And this usually comes with some side effects. Like for example, it might promote acne, especially in those people with uh, oily skins. And also, you might uh, find that you are overproducing red blood cells in case you are using this uh, method. You might find that uh, you are having fluid retention, meaning that in your ankles, you might find that you are, yeah, you are having swollen ankles because of this and uh, an increased prostatic surface antigen. Now, this is where the prostate produces that antigen, which is mostly due to when, when uh, the prostate is um, being inflamed or maybe it's just increasing in size. It might produce this and this is what is usually tested in the laboratory to check whether you have issues with your prostate. Unlike the natural testosterone, this one might lead to you having shrinking testicles and this comes uh, to the myths that people usually say that in case maybe you are bodybuilding and you are injecting, okay it's not a myth, you are and you are bodybuilding and you inject yourself with a testosterone, you, your balls might underdevelop so they might shrink, they may become a little bit smaller. And uh, this is because of that synthetic testosterone. And also, 
What's the name of the sleep apnea? No, sleep apnea, I, uh, I'm sure you know. Okay, apnea is when, for example, you're sleeping and uh, you kind of tend to forget uh, when you're supposed to breathe. Now, this is when, for example, you're sleeping and then you pause, you're not breathing, and then you start gasping for air. And mostly you're breathing through your mouth and uh, you're snoring most of the time. So this is a classical sign of uh, apnea. Now, let's go to the good things. If you're not planning to have hormonal replacement therapy, what can you do? The first thing is exercises. For men, this is actually to cast across exercises for everyone. Now, for ladies, you will have to take uh, exercises in moderation. For men, you can just go all full blown because now you don't have fat that you need to actually so much retain in your system. Because ladies uh, require a lot of that because estrogen will be uh, produced well, especially when you have cholesterol in your system. For men, this is totally different. You don't actually, you can just go all full brown. After all, you have a higher muscle density, so you need to exercise that. And before you start exercising, there's something very important that you need to know, what you call BMI, basal metabolic rate. Now, this one will take into account your weight against your height to know whether you are overweight or you are underweight. Now, in case you are underweight, you actually don't need to exercise as much. You need to increase your weight to go into within your BMI. Or in case maybe you are overweight or um, you are obese, you really need to make sure you exercise a lot to make sure that you bring down that weight to the recommended 18.5 to 24.5. Foods we cannot overemphasize here. You really need to have zinc. You need to have potassium. They're very important when it comes to production of several enzymes in the body. They are very important for you. We have foods like uh, nuts. We have green leafy vegetables because they come with a lot. And we have bright colored fruits. They actually come with antioxidants. Antioxidants are very important in the body because they are going to reduce the amount of uh, free radicals. And these ones, the free radicals might affect the sperm. So if you have less of that, then you're going to produce very healthy sperms. Now you need to avoid plastics that contain BPA and also avoid parabens because these ones usually uh, imitate estrogen. And like we said, estrogen will uh, have uh, a negative effect when it comes to testosterone because they are antagonistic. Now, in case you have low testosterone, um, I would recommend that uh, you try to avoid night shifts. Try to get enough sleep, and especially at night when uh, melatonin is being produced during the night. And stay away from phones because uh, blue light is known to cause less production of uh, melatonin. But in case you cannot avoid a night shift, try to find time to sleep completely. So you just get a heavy sleep that will help you because now this is the time that most of your body um, systems will stop and then the healing process starts and uh, some the production of uh, some of the hormones will be revamped and uh, yeah you will feel healthier and even um, your brains will be revamped in the morning. I hope that video was insightful. It added value to you. In case it did, give us a sub and also like the video and share to those people who you think will be interested. Until next time, see you in the next video.